Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast, episode number 59 with Melissa Limes, aka the girl with beer. Um, so long overdue uh, craft beer episode. Really excited that I got the chance to speak with Melissa a couple of weeks ago. Um, appreciate your making the time for her first ever podcast recording. So uh, it's happened a few times in the past. Always kind of cool to uh, give that experience to somebody, but really uh It was great hearing about Melissa's uh, story, uh, getting into this world and being able to kind of distinguish herself through uh, digital media and kind of just putting yourself out there and showcasing her uh, passions and interests and uh, just geeking out about beer. So um, really a great conversation and uh, check out her YouTube channel and her Instagram. Uh, She's posting a lot of great content there um, and uh, see everything else that we mentioned in the show notes. So Without further ado, this is episode number 59 with Melissa Limes, a.k.a. the girl with beer. Yeah, so we'll uh, go ahead and kick off here with our kind of usual uh, introduction. So if you want to introduce yourself briefly and kind of give your professional journey of how you got to be where you are today, and then we'll go from there. Sure. uh, I'll just, fair warning, I talk a lot, and I'm probably going to tell you my entire life story. (laughs) Oh, yeah, go for it. I hope that's okay. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, So I guess starting with what I do now would probably be good place to Mm -hmm. start this conversation. I'm the communications manager for a brewery out here in San Diego. So I've been living in San Diego for the past three and a half years. I grew up mostly in Canada. Um, My husband and I moved down to Houston after graduation. I did my bachelor's in communication and political science. I wanted to pursue law school, but when I went to an open house, I think my second year of undergrad, I was like, hmm, perhaps this isn't what I want to do. So I just, um, I was, you know, like typical undergrad, didn't know what I really wanted to do until my last year. I took a public relations class and I fell in love with that topic. So after graduation, uh, my boyfriend then, and now my husband, he got a job offer in Houston. So we moved down there and I was looking for work and, you know, without any experience, it was really hard for me to find something. So I decided to go back to school and did a associate's degree in digital communication, um, specializing in multimedia design. And I thought that would give me more of a competitive edge Mm -hmm. uh, because of all like the job listings I was looking at, a lot of the preferred qualifications they wanted you to have were, you know, being familiar with Adobe products like Illustrator, Photoshop, and also being familiar with like WordPress and understanding HTML, like things like that. So I was like, all right, if this is a preferred qualification right now in a few years, this is probably going to be a requirement. So I better get on it. And at the same time, like it would give me a different edge, like give me something, a skill set that others in this very competitive industry wouldn't have. So went to school, graduated, started interning for a PR firm. And while I was in school for the second time, I started working as a PR assistant slash graphic designer at the college I was attending. Um, And then about three and a half years ago, we moved to San Diego. And that's really when my love for craft beer started to become more Uh, than just like, oh, yeah, let me just have a beer. It's cool. Like, I wanted to learn more about it. And I got really interested in the beer industry. I really wanted to uh, work in the beer industry doing marketing and PR. And, you know, I had like the work experience by then and the education, but not a network in the beer community. And definitely like no real experience in the beer industry. So I started this Instagram account, The Girl With Beer, which is how you found me. Mm -hmm. Um, I started kind of posting about my beer travels. And I wouldn't say like posting reviews because I don't review beer. I just kind of talk about my experiences around a certain beer or like brewery I've been to. Um, And that kind of helps me supplement my resume. So as I started applying for more jobs in like social media marketing and um, marketing in general, it was a way for me to show uh, potential employers like, hey, look, I really love craft beer. I have a passion for this. I also have like the education and the work experience to do marketing. And that's how I landed my current job. Because, um, you know, sending a photo of my seller wasn't really, wouldn't have been like appropriate. Like, Attached is a photo of my dining room slash cellar just to show you how mm-hmm. much beer I drink. Um, so it was just like, it was a good way 
Uh, now, what I, part of what I do is uh, create and curate content for our social media platforms and manage those communities, obviously. So being able to show that I've done that for myself in the beer industry or like in a beer centric uh, platform was a good way to say like, I can do this, like hire me. I'm the best for this job. Like I'm obsessed with beer, obsessed with social media, obsessed with other parts of like communication. So that's how I landed my job. And I've been there for about a year now. Um, before that, it was just working for a different agency, doing like different, um, working with different clients. So like my background goes from like oil and gas to hospitality, food and beverage industry, and now like the craft beer industry. So yeah, I think that's my yeah. professional in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Well, and I guess there's so many good components of that that uh, I'm excited to kind of dig into a little bit more here because you know, the sort of moniker I have, like, you're, you know, sort of like the girls be it, whatever, like the higher ed geek thing for me, it's like sort of multifaceted or sort of however, like it kind of makes sense in the, uh, in the moment of like, I work in higher ed and I kind of geek out about that, but I also geek out about a lot of other things and just sort of like bringing like a geeky personality of being like really enthusiastic and into the things that I enjoy and wanting to, um, kind of, you know, engage in them that way and kind of share my appreciation. Um, but like, you know, yeah, just like some of the things where like you were able to just like curate content and create content yourself, like to distinguish yourself, which I think has also been my experience of just like writing and podcasting to just like put myself out there and, you know, create a network or, you know, meet people and uh, find like job opportunities. But then, you know, higher ed coming into your story as well of just, you know, that's obviously where you built the skills and knowledge to do the work that you're doing now. And you've done it in a couple of different settings, but, you know, just all these different things kind of coming together and also like, you know, your hobbies having a positive influence on your life and helping you to kind of, uh, you know, uh, find like an opportunity in terms of like working and getting gainful employment that's enjoyable and those sort of things. So it's all the stuff that I love like talking with people about. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Like you're hitting on all the, like the right things. I'm just like, Oh my gosh, it's so great. Um, but yeah, definitely yeah. <laughs> like having the educational background helps. Like I, I think people, we're still social media marketing is still fairly new, I guess. Like it's been around for a while, but in the beer industry too, it's fairly new. So a lot of people think like, Oh, I'm just going to hire an intern or hire someone straight out of college that like, um, can post for me. But there's so much PR that goes in the background, like messaging, how to come up with like a brand voice, how to stick to that brand voice and having that be like your, uh, your, North Star, uh, whenever you're posting c content, like is something that um, doesn't come naturally to everyone or like doesn't come with like just doing social media marketing. I think you do have to have that background to be successful and not everyone could do this job. I mean, it seems like everyone can do this job because it's like, oh, I'm just going to take a photo and like post it on the internet and perfect. Like there's so much strategy and thinking and planning and communication that goes behind the scenes for one Instagram post and I'm not just like talking about the girl with beer I'm talking about like clients I've worked with in the past and my current job mm -hmm. so like everything just kind of tied together the the job that I'm doing now it's it's wonderful because I love what I'm doing um, I get to do it for a fun industry a, for a company that like I really enjoy being part of with a really awesome team but I wouldn't have had this opportunity if it wasn't for my hobby kind of marrying together my my skill set and my passion and being able to show that in one portfolio like my Instagram account is kind of my portfolio when it comes to that right right well I guess yeah I mean you credited certainly yeah like I appreciate that of like the the value and the importance now especially as they've they've been around like long enough of like like you're seeing like a formal education bringing yourself into like you know, digital marketing and those sort of things. Cause it's like, certainly there probably are still people who think it is, it's like a, an afterthought or that it's like, you know, yeah, it can kind of be done, um, in a sort of, I don't know, like just not the right way. Like you, like you're engaging with it in terms of like taking it seriously, doing it high quality, mm -hmm. doing it consistently. And in my, like an engaging way. So like your formal education, you know, like learning that, uh, like the functional pieces and also kind of like the theory behind communicating and those sort of things. So mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything, I guess that way of kind of like the classroom experience that you want to talk more about us in terms of like what you feel like your college experience gave to you, or if there's other, like just sort of um, less tangible things where it's like, Oh, I, you know, you, 
uh, just as you kind of I grew or developed as a person, because I think it's always nice hearing, because I talk to a lot of people who work in higher ed who usually always have those stories where it's like, oh, I had a mentor and they like, you know, helped me to engage with this work to help support future students or something. But it's also like we work with students who gain, you know, meaningful skills and then go off into the world to do other things that aren't higher ed related. Like there's a lot of like stories in the higher ed ecosystem of people obviously just kind of like, uh, you know, engaging with this work and continuing to do it professionally. But I guess, yeah, like anything that comes to mind in terms of like how your college experience continues to kind of shape you in a positive way. Yeah. Like when I started college, I was, I was just a confused young 17 year old (laughs) who didn't know what she wanted to do when she grew up. And, um, sometimes I still feel like that, (laughs) you know? Uh, and I went into school like thinking I'm going to go on, go into law because the people I admired in my family that I really looked up to were either lawyers or judges. So I was like, Oh, like, that 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 should be my path because that's what the people I like are doing. I didn't really understand why I wanted that to be a career goal for myself. Um, but going into college, like I so I my parents moved to Kentucky from Canada when I was in in high school, and then afterwards, uh, when I graduated, I moved back to Canada to uh, pursue my college degree there. So like being away from my family, away from them, like in a different country just kind of set me up to be more independent and just take care of myself more. Mm. And, you know, like that could have been done otherwise, but I had a purpose to be away from them and that was to go to college. And with going to school, I, I developed critical thinking skills that I didn't have before. And I'm, I don't know a lot of people who have, you know, like went to school for something and pursued a career in that particular degree. But for me, it turned out to be that way. I studied communications and now my job title is communications manager. So it's like my path took me to different places and I I acquired different skills and I learned a lot along the way. But my schooling gave me the theoretical background to really like understand how communication works and how to bring that into different industries and different voices and different avenues and platforms because you know like when I was in school social media just had started like Facebook just started um you still had to have a college uh email address to even sign up to Facebook at the time and the way it's evolved like um that takes more practical like you have to be in it to learn it, I guess. But like with school, it's um, it it helps you kind of figure out who you are, what you want to do. It helps you develop critical thinking skills. It helps you develop research skills. So like, at least in my degree, I'm not really sure if I'm answering what you're asking for no, sure. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like it's just going off like on a tangent. I'm um, but. To me, it was really important to go to school. And even after I graduated, I I wasn't fully prepared to be a functioning adult. So I went back to school again and got a different degree, still in communication. But I needed to kind of update my skill set because the the world is changing and like media is changing. So I needed to be more aware of what was happening in the digital media platform. So like... um, it's just even out of school, I'm continuously learning, continuously reading, trying to become a better marketer, become a better person. So there's even after school, you still continue learning. And I think that's important. Yeah. Um, no, and I, that makes a lot of sense. Cause I think like sometimes like one way or another, you're figuring out kind of like kind of Goldilocksing your way to like to like a career or whatever, or even like, you know, you kind of uh, are able to build yourself to be adaptable and flexible whatever because yeah like somebody could get a degree like you're saying like in law and then be like well you know what i don't really like that but now i know that for sure and i'm going a different path or something but um you know thankfully like you figured out what you're good at or what you enjoy and that is also what you got your uh degree in and then um yeah certainly now it's like so much more important like you're saying just like lifelong learning like being open to that and being uh willing to commit to that and like whether it takes the shape of like a two-year degree or just some certificate or you're kind of taking courses or, you know, going to a conference or something. But, um, yeah, there's always new things to learn or just kind of take inspiration from or to um, kind of affirm the things that you're doing and all that. Because, like, yeah, I mean, you easily could have 
not gotten a formalized credential to kind of certify your abilities in digital media, but like there is a lot of value in that. And I think it would, it also just kind of distinguishes you, you know, kind of in the marketplace, like you were saying, like, it's like, okay, like I know my stuff here is not just like, trust me. Like I, yeah. you know, I know how to do all of this. I swear or whatever. Like, cause even with the portfolio, it's like, it's like you, you kind of have like the whole pantheon of things that can really help like distinguish people as they're, uh, especially like getting their career started. It's like, like I've learned it. And also it's like, kind of like show and tell, like you're able to say like, this is the kind of the product of what my learning gave me, you know, like you can just yeah. kind of show the whole portfolio and those sort of things. So, um, yeah, that's really I mean, great. like, as you're saying, sometimes like, you may not have to have a degree to be successful or like figure things out or get the experience, but, um, in this day and age, it's kind of hard to find even an entry level job without that piece of paper that says you went to school. So it, it at least opens the door, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I couldn't just show like a portfolio or like the work I've done because I, I wouldn't have been able to build that portfolio without my undergrad. Um, I know a lot of people have succeeded without one, but for me, I it's definitely open doors that wouldn't have been open without it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and also too, like you're saying, like it kind of segues to my next question about like your current work and exploring that a little bit more, like the idea that you your kind of discipline is something that is also very adaptable versus like, you know, sometimes if it's like, okay, I got a degree in like electrical engineering. It's like, well, oh, that's yeah, that, yeah. like, that's what you're doing. Like you're doing that thing, but it's like, well, you could be a communicator for an electrical engineering firm or like, or a craft beer play or what? Like, it's sort of like the more liberal arts and kind of building you up as more of like a whole person, just, you know, whether it's like mm-hmm. in or outside the classroom, there's a lot of stuff that kind of, digs into that in terms of like the higher ed world of just like sort of building whole people that are very, again, just like, uh, lifelong learners and like, uh, just come at the world with a very holistic perspective. So like that idea that you just understand how people communicate, which is just a fundamental piece of being human is, you know, communicating ideas and connecting and building community and all, all that kind of stuff. So I guess if you want to dig into that, of maybe even like, you know, I'm obviously super excited to like have an episode that kind of like is anchored by craft beer because we've not really done that <laughs> yet. But like, even if it's just generally like that idea of like your current work of like doing this stuff, like if there's like an anecdote in terms of just like being able to connect with people, share a story, spread a message or like whatever, I guess, like what, what has been like motivating and in- inspiring for you in terms of like your current work that like keeps you at it. Maybe, maybe it's more craft beer focused, like in terms of just like literally where you are now or just like in communication in general, like what has been like resonating with you to kind of keep you motivated to be doing it now? I think the best part is knowing that the beverage, this like delicious liquid brings people together. (laughs) Uh, It's, you know, the reason why we're talking, you found me through me posting about craft beer. And yesterday I was out at lunch with two girls I met through Instagram through like craft beer. We're drinking and the guy next to us orders a beer that my company it's my our beer and I was just like I turn around to him I'm like good choice like love it I just love when people are enjoying the product that I'm a part of and it's like with beer it's been around for years you know and it's the like breweries or pubs those are those are places people go and hang out and be together and exchange ideas and have conversations and I love that like in my life professionally and personally beer has brought me to engage with different people from different walks of life that I wouldn't have had an opportunity to do so otherwise and it sounds crazy it's like it's just beer but you know like I I play on a softball team with a bunch of people who got together because we like beer, like craft beer, we're geek out about it. So I have my job because I geek out about craft beer. Mm. I have my friends because I geek out about craft beer. And if I didn't make my friends through the craft beer community, I made them through like the CrossFit community, another thing I geek out about. And those people also really enjoy beer. So it's like everything overlaps. And for me, being able to bring our product to market as a marketer, like being able to see people enjoy this and have those same experiences like I just described, it's it's a big motivator. It's like 
I don't typically work at festivals. Um, I'm more like behind the scenes, but one festival where I was pouring beer for our tent, like the way people just were so happy to drink and be there and like keep coming back to our booth and saying like, Oh, this is so tasty. Like, I love this. Like I want more of this. It it makes you happy. Like seeing people enjoy your product and have the, having a good time being in that environment. So like, if it wasn't for the beer industry, I don't know what I like. I don't know what I would be doing, but I don't think it would be as fun. I've di- I've I've experiences in like different industries, and it's never been this much fun. And it it my like I don't I never had a chance to see like how much joy our product brought to other people in my other jobs. Whereas here, it's like oh, it's it's just amazing liquid. Like yay, mm. everyone enjoys it. And if people don't enjoy it, then <laughs> will find them a beer that they do enjoy there's a there's a style for everyone honestly like when people say I don't like beer I'm like well um what have you had like can can I give you this one to try like what do you typically drink maybe there is a flavor profile that we can play around with that you might enjoy and for most of my friends who say like oh I don't like beer it's because they've been used to drinking like the same mass-produced beer that may not be the style that they like like I don't really love lagers so like I never was really quote unquote a beer drinker because that's all I was exposed to until I started tasting different styles of beer and I was like oh my god this there's so much more that exists and this is what I want and um and that helped me like figure out what kind of style of beer I like and became a beer lover like a beer geek at this point. Like I'm just, I'm just like obsessed with it. So, um, yeah. No. Yeah. Well, cause I guess it is like, cause I know like you're saying, like you're not even like getting like super deep into like necessarily like reviewing it. And cause that, cause that gets into kind of like food critic territory. And like, I think sometimes that can be like intimidating or inaccessible. It's like, if you're, you can never just say sort of like, Oh, I see what they're going for here. Like you're kind of just like describing like, uh-huh. this, this is what this is like. So like, versus being like, Oh, that's, you know, like I'm being a critic and saying whether it's good or bad. It's like, it's highly subjective. And, you know, I, I think sometimes it's, that's the language or the way that people kind of get super deep into describing it can kind of, I don't know, be Absolutely. inaccessible. But, yeah. But like the idea too, like you're saying of like the idea of it, like a lot of tap rooms and stuff being like community spaces or just a, it's mm-hmm. a, you know, a place and a thing uh, that brings people together and brings people joy. And like, it's awesome that, yeah, like you've been able to witness that firsthand versus like, yeah, like other people doing a lot of different kinds of work just can't, you know, they won't be able to see how people kind of consume or enjoy the thing that they're creating. Um, yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. And speaking of like not reviewing, and that's precisely the reason why I don't like writing if something's good or bad. And sometimes I get critiqued on that and I get where people are coming from, but I don't have the qualifications to review or critique beer. I'm not a Cicerone. I am a marketer who just enjoys beer. And I enjoy the experiences I have around trying new beer. I like the taste of it, but I'm not going to break it down to like digest everything. I dissect everything about it um, because that's not what I do. And also, like, I know how much love and passion and, like, sweat and tears go into making these beers that if I don't like something, saying, like, this is shit, don't drink it, like, that's not fair to the person making it. Also, you did touch on the fact that taste is subjective. I've had a beer where I thought, oh, my God, this is so sweet. And I'm the type of person who eats, like, cake for breakfast. And I was like, this this beer is so sweet. I can't even drink another sip. And then I have another friend who thinks the same beer is amazing and is so good, you know. And it's the same beer with two different palates. So for me to review that and be like, I didn't like this beer. This beer is shit wouldn't be fair because someone else is going to have a different experience about it. For me, it's like, here's what I'm drinking. Here's where I'm at. And whenever I travel, it's easier to experience that city through the breweries because that's what I'm familiar with. And like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have a beer at this place, go check out this other place and then do all the other touristy things and enjoy my time. Because I think that like the local food and local beer scene is a great way to experience a new city. And that's, that's kind of like how I like to experience new cities. I eat and drink and go walk around to burn off the calories I just consumed. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because yeah, you've done, um, and we'll link out to your uh, YouTube channel that has like your uh, the videos and places that you've visited and things that you've uh, like the places you've gone to have like different beers and stuff. So yeah, because I think that that's honestly like what I do as well. Because I think it like it kind of touches on something you just said too. Of like, on one hand, it's like I've kind of created this vernacular in my head of just like people who make beer, like, you know, like they're like the brewers because they're literally like, yeah, like painstakingly uh, creating these things. It's like they're like making their art and it just happens to be like in a beer. And, you know, the idea that like they're really getting into all of the like the science and the flavors and like how you're combining things and all that. Like, it's like really a, a lot of times there's like these very unique expressions and like the idea is just like as with art, it could just be like, oh, I could see what they were going for there, even if it's, mm-hmm. like, not, like, your favorite thing. It's just like, oh, that's really interesting. I never thought to do that before. Or, like, you know, yeah, you're just kind of appreciating uh, kind of their art, so to speak, like in, in, in the form of this beer um, and not making those kind of, like, you know, kind of qualitative uh, assumptions about whether it's, like, oh, this is bad or whatever. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think, too, like, with the traveling piece, like, you can go and I think it can be – like it being like a community space, it's like a really good gateway to just like that local community. And also it's like, I usually will go and be like, what would you recommend to do? Cause like, I'll usually already have a short list of places that I'm like already planning on going to, but it's interesting to see like sort of unsolicited, they'll be like, Oh, you should go here and you should do that. And I'm like, cool. I already have those on my list. Like if a local person, like you're here, like you're really like kind of ingrained into the local community and you're recommending it. And I'm like, great. I, you know, <laughs> sort of made a good choice or whatever, but then often it's like, Oh, I didn't even know about that place, but I would assume you would know better. So like, I'll probably, you know, try to swing by. So, um, so I think, yeah, it's always like a, like a nice kind of anchor for anywhere, um, that I visited is to at least pop into a place or two, um, different tap rooms. But, um, and I guess, um, I feel like we've kind of gotten to a lot of the stuff. I mean, I guess if there's anything else in terms of like, um, I always like to ask people like what they're reading, watching and or listening to like just, you know, like podcasts or books or, you know, uh, you know, anything that if it's just for pure entertainment value or like stuff that maybe is informing your marketing work or stuff about like craft beer, I guess, you know, like, is there any stuff that you might want to kind of just give a tip of the hat to that we could uh, include in the show notes? I'm listening to an audiobook. I really like listening to audiobooks just because like, um, I like to listen to it on my morning walks when I'm walking my dog or like if I'm trying to go for a run, uh, I get really bored of running. So having something in my ear kind of motivates me to go the distance. Mm -hmm. So what I'm currently listening to is Let My People Go Surfing by Yvonne, um, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Chouinard, I think, um, the founder of Patagonia. That's what I'm listening to currently. I'm almost done with that. Reading... Uh, the Confidence Code by Caddy K and Claire Shipman. Um, it's just like building confidence for women, and I feel like that's something that I should really work on. And it's just an interesting read. I just started it, so I can't really speak much about it. And watching, I am uh, I'm watching Law and Order SVU. Uh, it's one of my favorite shows. Mm-hmm. So I like I'm caught up with like the current seasons. So I'm just I've started back from like episode one and I'm up to like season eight now so (laughs) I like watching it like kind of unwind at the end of the day but I can't fall asleep when that's like the last thing I watch because I'll like have nightmares so I like try to go on YouTube and watch like a funny video or something before falling asleep just to uh, get my mind off of what I just watched but I really enjoy like uh, criminal shows like yeah, it's I've always really like Law and Order, even as a teenager. <laughs> yeah, it just blows my mind. That's like cause it's like season twenty one coming up or something. Like it's just like it, it just yeah. broke the other Law and Order's record of like the longest running like network show. So it's just like yeah, I mean, and I know it's like a lot of people like it, and it's like just syndicated all over the place. Like it, it just like is well, always on. Um, I love yeah. like the different topics that you know like. Even in the in the older episodes, just things that were current, you know, in the political uh, political sphere. But like, it's part of everyone's lives, and like, just seeing some of these issues being brought up on this like fictionalized show is really interesting. And it, you know, like 
it exposed me to things that I personally never experienced, but just trying to understand other people's point of views, like even with a TV show, it's been really interesting. So, and I think Olivia Benson is a badass, and I I love watching her. Yeah, yeah, that's great, and yeah, quite a good idea to have like a palate cleanser uh, after yeah. watching, especially if you're like just watch, like I just watched four episodes of the show and I need to go to bed. So that's like, yeah, clean, clean slate, and then yeah, that's what I sleep. was doing, yeah. and then wondering why I wasn't sleeping well. <laughs> and I was like <laughs> starting to sleep with like the light on. I'm like, okay, no, we're gonna watch something funny and then go to bed. Oh man, yeah, um, well that's great. Yeah, I mean, I. I, I I've never gotten into audiobooks, but I feel like I need to because I listen to a lot of podcasts and like yeah. I, I will do that like passively a lot. But like sitting down and reading a book, it's like a chore. Like I just I cannot like more often than not like, you know, sit through and like reality either like fall asleep or I'm just like getting distracted or something. Um, but I'll listen to a lot of podcasts. So maybe I need to. Yeah, I, yeah. I just recently started uh, listening to audiobooks maybe like three months ago and it's just it's easy to do when you have passive time like when I'm getting ready for work when I'm walking my dog when I'm running I I also listen to podcasts but there isn't a lot that like there isn't one that comes to the top of my head because I'm I'm still trying to like find ones that I like um but I, I think podcasts and books are just like audiobooks are a great way when you're driving. Like it makes you feel like your time is more used more efficiently when you have something in your ear. And with reading, it's to me reading is a lot of like it's a pleasurable thing. It's not a chore. It's just I don't make time for it because every day is just like hectic and I feel like to read you have to really focus on what you're reading or you miss, you know, half the sentence and you're like, oh, what, what was I, what was I doing right now? You know, yeah. it's easy to get distracted. And sometimes like I have so many thoughts in my head. I'm like, okay, I need to focus on what I'm reading. But then like my dog barks and I'm like, okay, well, this is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, like for a long time, I didn't read for pleasure, like after college, because I was like, I hate books. It's not true. I don't hate books. I was just, you know, forced to read a lot uh, in school. And then I think the first fiction book I picked up after, I was just like, oh, my God, I missed reading for pleasure. And I missed reading fiction books. And I miss like, where my mind can take me, like my imagination and bringing these words to life in my head. I miss that. And then um and I feel like I should make more time for it, but sometimes I guess watching Law and Order is easier than reading about it, right? Right, right. Because um, yeah, I think my like diet of like good stories is mostly like yeah, like movies and television. Then I'll like be playing a video game, and it's just like a single player experience, and I'm like going through a story or something. So like. Like it's just very low on the the pecking order. It's just like okay, well, I have that book that I've been meaning to read. You know, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I usually reserve it for like okay, I'm like on the train or yeah, I'm on on the plane or waiting for the plane. Like any time where it's like I really can't do anything else, so I guess I'll read. <laughs> like yeah. it just ends up being that way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, on um, planes, I like I see people working, and I'm like, I can't, I can't work on planes just because like you're already so crammed, and like I don't want to, I don't know, I don't want like people looking at my screen, and I don't want to hit them with my elbow when I'm trying to type. So like, mm -hmm. reading is easier, or like I'll download an episode or two on Netflix and like watch that on the plane. But yeah, yeah. yeah um, I can't remember who it was, but like I remember someone saying that it was they mm -hmm. they uh, they only read when they're flying like they made a rule for themselves like not to work not to watch anything but like use that time to just read and I was like oh that's a good idea maybe I should do it but I haven't <laughs> I read half the time <laughs> yeah yeah um or even just like reading a chapter before bed and it's like eventually we'll get the book done like you know because it's like okay it makes you sleepy just like put yourself to sleep with the book or something mm -hmm. but um well uh yeah I guess then we'll uh with all of that, we will now end the episode as we always do as the kind of eternal optimist that I am. Um, always just like ending the episodes with something or things that you are looking forward to in your life, job, and or the world. So kind of any of those uh, things or all of the things. Um, yeah, just anything that you're looking forward to. I'm going to Portland 
in a couple of weeks uh, to meet up with some friends from college and probably check out the breweries there. It's been a while since I've been to Portland. Oh, I'm, I'm flying out to Denver uh, tomorrow to go to Craft Brewers Conference, which is going to be my first time ever. It's a huge conference for people in the craft beer industry. So that's kind of like work and personal. I'm looking forward to drinking all the Denver beers and learning more about my my work and getting to meet some of the people in my industry that I haven't had a chance to meet yet. And um, yeah, I think that's kind of like what I'm looking forward to in my job in life. Very good. Um, yeah, I went to Denver uh, last year for the first time, and it's just like a great scene out there. I look forward to going back whenever, uh, whenever I can. And uh, and I think I just heard a, a craft beer podcast talking about that, uh, like the CPC. Um, yeah, yeah. I remember, like when I first started my job here, it it was happening. So it's I I've been at my at my current role for about a year, so it makes sense. And I remember being like, "Next year I'm going," and <laughs> next year came so fast, I can't believe it. Yeah, well, I will look forward to. I'm sure you will share much about your uh, adventures and stuff. So I look forward to uh, seeing all all the things you get up to and everything. And uh, yeah, just really appreciate you know you making the time for the show and sharing all that you did. And um, like I said, I'll, we'll have uh, ways to connect with you uh, in the show notes and uh, links to all the stuff that we talked about. So. Um, yeah, thanks so much again. And, uh, yeah, enjoy the the travels and all the beer and, uh, enjoy the conference. Thank you so much for having me. This is my first podcast. So, uh, excuse my stumbling and my nervousness, but it's been, it's been awesome talking to you. Thanks for reaching out and having me on the show. This is awesome. This podcast is part of the connect edu podcast network, bringing together diverse voices in the higher ed community. Check us out on Twitter at ConnectEDUPod or at ConnectEDU.network. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast.